Okay, you can title this page epithelial tissue. You might remember that I mentioned there are four main kinds of tissue in the body. They are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. So every area of the body is one of these kinds of tissue, these four kinds. And now I'll tell you a little more about epithelial and all the different kinds. Where is epithelial tissue found? Well, it lines every single organ. Your heart, your kidneys, your lungs, your bladder, your GI tract, and on and on. It is what makes up your skin, at least the outer part of it. It lines the tracks. Think about everything that's open to the outside. There's, actually, put a dot. There's the respiratory tract. <sighs> right, our breathing. There's the GI tract. Our pie hole down to our anus. There's the reproductive tract, or the urogen urogenital. In males, semen and urine go out the same opening through the penis. In girls, urine leaves via the urethra, and the reproductive tract is the vagina. But both of those are tracts. And so then, the urinary tract. Like I said, sometimes these could be combined, as they are in males. And then, um, all of these... are all mucous membranes. And we could add one more mucous membrane down here. It's not considered a tract though. And that's the conjunctiva of your eye. If someone gets pink eye, they have an infection in their conjunctiva. All of the mucous membranes, I'm gonna switch to a pink pen here have goblet cells that make mucus. Mucus in the respiratory tract will help clean, keep it clean of debris. Mucus in the GI tract keeps food from damaging the walls of the GI tract. Mucus and other secretions in the reproductive tract decrease um, risk of infection and also lubrication, all of those would go along here. You even make mucus in the conjunctiva to help keep your eye clean. All mucous membranes and yeah, so all of these mucous membranes contain lots of white blood cells especially a kind of white blood cell known as a mast, spell, mast cell. Mast cells release histamine. Probably you've all heard of that, right? If you've ever taken an antihistamine. So histamine is going to cause inflammation. Means an area will become red, hot, swollen, and possibly more painful. So those are some places where epithelial tissue is found. Get you really want to get this idea of the lining stuck in your mind, because whether it's lining your blood vessels or lining the outside of your body in the skin, it's still epithelial tissue. So um, another important thing about epithelial tissue is it forms your glands. 
and you have lots of glands in your body. Some of them are exocrine. What this means is the product goes onto a mucous membrane or onto the skin. I'll give you a bunch of examples. Think of some that are secreted onto the skin. There are sweat glands. There are oil glands. Sometimes they're called, that's called sebum. There are tear glands. Those all go on the skin, right? Well, what about onto the GI tract? So these all go onto the skin. There are salivary glands that secrete their products onto the GI tract and other digestive enzymes, so let's say from the pancreas, these secrete their products into the GI tract. Then there are endocrine, well, actually I forgot mucus, which is an important gland in a variety, in all of those places. So we go on to the GI tract too. Then there's endocrine glands. See that word endo? So this is going to be a product that goes into the blood. These are hormones. Maybe you can think of the thyroid gland makes thyroxin. The adrenal gland makes a variety of stress hormones like cortisol. Probably all heard of that by now and also epinephrine. So those are two important stress hormones, epinephrine and cortisol. Insulin it's a storage hormone from the pancreas. It goes into the bloodstream. You probably know it makes your blood sugar go down, but the reason it does that is to get the blood or the sugar out of your blood and into the cells where it can be stored or used. Probably you've heard of growth hormone. That comes from your pituitary gland in your brain. And estrogen and testosterone come from the ovaries or the testes, respectively. So these are just some examples of hormones. There are many others. The idea is the cells that make and secrete these hormones are epithelial cells. And then specifically, they're a gland, and even more specifically, glands can either be endocrine or exocrine. Next, let's look at some of the shapes of epithelial cells. So you might recognize that all of the cells in this upper portion are flat. We call them squamous, which means basically squashed. You can see them here. They're flat cells, and they excel at diffusion. You can think about places where stuff needs to diffuse. One might be in the lungs, right? And sure enough, the inner parts of your lungs are made of simple squamous, simple meaning that they're just in one layer and also between capillaries and body cells, things like glucose, etc. not just gases. So we've got gas and nutrient exchange. Might just add that too, nutrient. So I'm going to give you an example here. Right here, this represents what's called an alveolus of the lung. And that word means grape. So it's just a little sac 
of air in your lung, and you have uh, millions of these in your lungs. And the oxygen goes from the alveolus into a capillary that is also lined with epithelial cells. So the oxygen only has to pass through really a couple of cell layers to get into the blood. And then you might predict that the carbon dioxide that was in that pulmonary capillary is going to go into the alveolus so you can breathe it out. Now another example of where we find those flat cells is in the skin and also like in your esophagus in places where there's a lot of potential for abrasion. So these are still the flat cells, but now they're in layers, so we call this stratified. And this is what you find on the outer part of your skin. There are these layers of dead cells called stratified squamous epithelium. So, as I mentioned, you find these on the skin, making up the skin, and also uh, your mouth and esophagus. It's a very protective function. You might have heard me say they're dead. Well, the reason they died was because as they were dividing down lower in the skin and pushing up, they get filled and filled and filled inside and then even the outer parts with a waterproof protein called keratin. You've probably heard of that because it's not just in your skin. It's also important in your hair and your nails. So keratin is a waterproof protein. And so you're shedding these cells all the time, but luckily you're always making more. Okay, now let's look at a totally different shape of cell that is still epithelial, so it still means it's lining something. So far we looked at the lining of the lungs and the lining of capillaries, and, or all blood vessels, and, now, and then we looked at the lining of our body, it's the cutaneous membrane. Now let's look at the lining of the GI tract. These cells are tall, columnar shaped. Call them simple columnar epithelial cells. Notice this funny looking one in here. That's a goblet cell. Remember talking about that? Goblet cells make mucus right here. That's a goblet cell. So these line the intestine and absorb nutrients. Then last but not least, there are these little boxy cells that make up some organs. And these are called simple, meaning they're in one layer, cuboidal epithelial cells. You find these a lot in glands. They're common in glands such as the thyroid gland. They also uh, make up the filters of the kidneys. And I think we'll end that one there.